What's up, everyone? For those of you who don't know who I am or what I'm doing, a few weeks ago, I gave myself one year to create my ideal video game. Now, what happens if I don't complete this in time? Well, there's not really any stakes, but I guess I'll just be really disappointed in myself. I mean, they say as you get older, you become more and more like your parents. So I guess depending on how this goes, that just may happen sooner rather than later. So at the time of recording this, I'm about two and a half weeks into the development of this game, and the goal by the end of this video is to have a majority of the basic features implemented into the game. Are they going to work efficiently? Not a chance. Are they going to at least work though? Mm. Anyway, as long as I can have a semblance of a feature set implemented, I can basically create a mock level that I can use for testing to really know what needs to be refined or adjusted. That being said, in order to get the game to a point where I can actually make this level, there is a lot of work to do. So let's get started and let's start with some basic character animations. As I hinted at at the end of the last video, I wanted to start this video by going over some of the animations for the game. Now, as a warning, don't get too attached to these graphics or the animations because, even though this design style has served me well over the past few weeks, the next revision is absolutely amazing and is what we're going to move forward with. Stick around to the end of the video or go to my Twitter if you want to see an example of what this design style will be. Anyway, even though these graphics are already gone away in my current build, I needed to learn how to implement animations, so I added some simple animations and while I was working on the player, I added in a few additional abilities. One to allow the player to interrupt enemy casts, and a second one to do a stomp attack. Now with these basic animations finished, I want to actually spend a few minutes talking about the actual character building part of the game, because it's something that's very instrumental and I haven't really touched on too much. Now I've explained the basics of this game in past videos, it's going to be a 2D platformer rogue-like dungeon crawler, but I haven't really talked about many specifics, so I want to take a few minutes and talk about the class and talent part of this game, and how you actually build your character throughout a run. So I'm just going to go through that now. First off, as the player, you'll start off a run by picking a class. This class will be the weapon that you control throughout the run, and these classes will come with two primary combat abilities that will scale with your ability attributes. Now, this depends on the class, so for an example, a sword might have a heavier strength scaling, where a wand might have more of an arcana scaling. So, after you pick your class, you'll pick a primary and a secondary specialization. These selected specializations determine what buffs drop from the enemies that you kill. For example, if you select the offensive specialization as your primary specialization, when you kill an enemy, there is a chance that you receive one of the stacking buffs contained within that specialization. These buffs are generally pretty generic, so stuff like attack speed bonuses, life steal, reflect damage, passive shields, etc. Each of the specializations will be fairly different. Right now I'm thinking there's an offensive tree, a defensive tree, and then a utility tree. And this will allow newer players to play a little bit more safely and experienced players to play a little bit more glass cannony if they want to, to try to optimize their runs. The secondary specialization is just picking one of the two that you didn't pick as your primary, and you just have a lower chance to get one of your secondary specializations drops. So now that you have your class and specialization selected, you're ready to start your run. Each floor will contain a randomly generated series of rooms, all leading you to a boss room. As you're going through these rooms, as you kill enemies and get drops, you'll also get experience points, which will be used to level up your character, and when you level up, you gain attribute points. These attribute points can be used to increase your strength if you want more melee damage, for example, your arcana, your agility, or your vitality. Each of them will do something different and will depend on your class and how you like to play. Another thing to note here is that in addition to the talent drops and the experience, you can also find and pick up up to two secondary abilities, which will be very straightforward activated buffs on a fairly long cooldown. And finally, the last main mechanic are ability modifiers. Now I'm not really going to touch on these too much, but put very simply, these will be effects that you can apply to one of your class's primary abilities that will significantly change how they work. 
For example, one might be that every time you damage an enemy, it creates a little chain lightning effect that hits other enemies in range or something. I haven't really decided on the exact modifiers, but they'll be fairly significant and also fairly rare. My goal with these systems is to make a way for you to build a character that feels unique without feeling underpowered or without there being too much opportunity cost for going one build versus another, really leaving a significant amount of the decisions up to the player with some additional RNG thrown in there with the ability modifiers and with what talent drops you get throughout the run. So that's the main character building process of the game. And if that was confusing to you, same, actually. I didn't realize how difficult it was to really describe how this was going to work without practical examples. So just hang tight. I can guarantee you it's going to be fun, but just wait until I build some stuff out and really can show you examples if you're not really understanding my, my view for this game. So with that in mind, I created the base system for these features, added the ability to select a class, added the specialization selection, and added some drop rate stuff. And I want to tell you that I just don't have any good footage of this, and it's really just not exciting to look at but in reality it's just done really poorly and I just don't want to show it to you. Uh, I'll show you some examples of it in practice but behind the scenes it's terribly messy. That's one of the things that I'm going to focus on refactoring during this planning stage is really refining how this works but for now just trust me that you can select a class, select a specialization and you can get drops based on that specialization. And while I was at it I actually added the ability to have attributes actually affect your character so right now adding more strength gives you more damage. I haven't really fully planned out the entire attribute system yet so I stopped with just strength but it's getting there and things are actually working. That being said, until I revisit this section and really refine, plan out, and optimize how this works, we're just gonna call it done for now and move on. So with those features in place, I focused on adding some nice touches to the game to really round off this prototype and make the first makeshift level playable. So I focused on fixing some bugs, like the fact that enemies didn't have gravity affecting them if they fell off a platform. I added a very simple player UI, added some one-way platforms, and some basic music and sound effects. And with that done, I created a few different rooms of various layouts and sizes to get a feel for what I thought was comfortable, and just built the game for my friends and myself to play around with. And with that, I had my test area and first real prototype ready to use. Unfortunately, that means that the next week or so is going to just be full of planning. I really want to plan out the specifics for the talent system and the ability modifiers, and there's not going to be a lot to update you guys on until all of that is established. But for those of you who are enjoying the content, I do have something special planned for the end of October, so keep an eye out for that. Just a little mini project that I have planned, and since you made it this far, I'll spoil it a little bit. Just think Minesweeper Reimagined. It's going to be interesting, but I think you guys will like it. Also, before we close out the video, I've put a picture on screen of what the final design will be for the game, or at least the design style. And if you want more examples of what the design will be, check out my Twitter. I've posted a more in-depth screenshot there. That being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to, noti to get notified when my videos go live and like the video if you did enjoy it. That being said, I am Joseph. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. I'll see you next time.